In the top stories, a primary school teacher dies in a shooting incident. The health minister stresses computer literacy ahead of online record system rollout. And Beijing girls lose their netball World Cup opener. Welcome to Nation News for Friday, August 7, 2015. I'm Natasha Beckles. We are bringing the best of October 2015 to you. We live all the action from the Sweet Summer Festival in this year's Quapova Souvenir Magazine. Experience the carnival feeling over and over again with photos from all the major events. Quapova Souvenir 2015 will be available on newsstands Island Wide on August 5th or online at www.nationnews.com. Police are investigating the shooting death of a 30-year-old primary school teacher. Dwight Holder, a teacher at Half Moon Fort, died on the spot at Long Place Waterford St. Michael in the early hours of Friday morning. He was visiting relatives in the area and reports suggest the shooting was the result of an altercation between two rival groups. Two other men were rushed to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital with gunshot wounds. Health Minister John Boyce is encouraging all health professionals to become computer literate as his ministry prepares to roll out the online record system MedData across the island. The system is currently being piloted at the Winston Scott and Edgar Cochrane Polyclinics as well as the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. It is expected to be fully functional within the next year. Mr. Boyce said computer literacy would help to ensure the effectiveness of the system. He was speaking on Friday during an award ceremony for the 100 Improvements in Nursing Organizational Challenge. Historian Robert Bobby Morris is maintaining that officials were wrong when they said only 14 people lost their lives in the 1937 disturbances. He is adamant that no less than 22 people died. 14 was the first information put out by the public. But remember, 14 died when they did their report, 47 wounded. But when I went back to the coroner's office in the hospital, I found the ones who died, the wounded ones who died. I put all the names in the newspaper then, and I remember my colleague um, of the climate pain movement, Mr. Thomas Young, commented on that. I speak under correction, but I think that my my distinguished colleague, um, David Brown, also found some of those others who had died. David also checked and found some more who, were who had died. David, I stand by our research. That is more than the 14 that were given officially. Mr. Morris was speaking on Thursday night during a symposium hosted by the Labor Department and the Barbados Workers Union. It focused on the life and work of national heroes Sir Grant Lee Adams and Sir Hugh Springer. Police are reporting signs of decreasing crime in the former trouble spots of New Orleans and Chapman Lane, the city. And Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police, Irwin Boyce, has praised community police officers for their efforts. He says there are still problems in the districts, but there has been a decline in reports of serious matters. Mr. Boyce was speaking during the graduation ceremony of the Force's Homework and Reading Program, which was sponsored by Pan American International Insurance. An appeal is going out to former workers of Andrew's Sugar Factory to help dismantle the buildings. There are currently 20 workers on the site working in four teams, but Inter-Sugar Partnership officials say they need at least 15 crews to complete the demolition by year-end. Chairman Anthony De Silva told the media they want people who know how the factory was put together so they can take it apart safely. Andrew's is earmarked for a state-of-the-art refurbishment. The usually sleepy Spite Stung will be full of activity on Saturday as the Barbados Tourism Product Authority hosts Spite Stung Alive. The 12-hour cultural extravaganza will include tours, road tennis, water sports and arts and crafts. And for those still in the crop over spirit, there will be a mini carnival and performances from local entertainers. Chief Executive Officer of the BTPA, Dr. Kerry Hall, spoke to Nation News about the event during a site visit on Thursday. The Spice Town Alive event is the inaugural event of the Barbados Tourism Product Authority. We wanted to launch with a bang and we decided we were going to do this event in Spice Town. Originally it was supposed to be just a Beijing Expo, a much smaller event, but when we decided it was going to be in Spice Town, based on the rich historic value of this wonderful 
port city of Spikestown, we decided, you know, if we're going into Spikestown, let's do something really big. Because a part of our mandate is to not only enhance the existing product and services in Barbados, but also to create new products and services in line with the expectations of the modern day traveler that's coming to Barbados, who are looking for what they call cultural and community immersion. These people want to come and experience the culture of a destination. They want to interact with locals. They want to eat local food. They, they want to give back to the communities, etc. So the onus is on us to create the types of products and services that visitors will want to come and to return to Barbados and also tell their friends. 2015 People's Monarch's Stetson Red Plastic Bag Wheelchair says Groovy Soka is what will make the genre recognizable to the world. He made the comments on Thursday as he accepted his winnings of $15,001 in the Starcom Network sponsored competition. From performing overseas, I recognize that the, the type I recognize the type of song that people want to hear and people want to dance to. People like happy songs, people like to smile and dance and, and, and have fun. And I believe that I can make a contribution in that in that regard as well. And I also believe that that the groovy songs are the songs that will take soca music to the next level uh, in, in terms of being recognized across the world. So I, I'm happy to be part of that. I, it, it is not a, a job for me alone. Uh, there's several other people and I always like to, to give credit to the producers. Um, very often we, we see only the people who are up front, but the producers are, are, um, are crucial to what we produce. RPB said he was grateful for the support of his fans. I, I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for all the support that they've, they've given me over the years. As I've said, victory comes long before competitions. Uh, when I produce a song and the, the people are loving it, the way they love the song uh, spontaneous, I'm happy. For me, that's a victory in itself. I want to thank Red Boys for doing an excellent job on this song. When I went into the studio, they were all eager and excited to, to get involved um, with this song and they did an excellent job and they've been doing a great job over the years. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. In sports, Barbados lost the opening match of the 2015 Netball World Cup 73-28 to New Zealand early this morning at the Alphonse Arena in Sydney, Australia. After a close 5-2 start, New Zealand stamped their dominance on the game and ran away with the win. Shawnee Wharton had 14 from 16 to top the Barbadian shooters. And finally, a convicted sex offender has apparently escaped from a Norwegian island prison on a surfboard using a plastic shovel to paddle to the mainland. The prisoner went missing during the night and a surfboard and shovel belonging to the prison were found on the shore of the mainland about three kilometers away. The low security prison is famous for its leniency. Inmates are allowed to watch movies, go cycling and use local beaches. It has no fences and is often held up as the ultimate symbol of Norway's emphasis on humane incarceration policies. That's where we end Nation News for Friday. Log on to nationnews.com, YouTube, Facebook or Twitter for more news and look out for the weekend buzz a little later. Thank you so much for joining us.